Welcome back, everyone. we got another uh, Warp World episode for you uh, of our one one podcast. We're going to be covering the uh, Sony Press Conference. Uh, with me, as always, is my uh, co-host, uh, yo, yo. Eddie the Chocolate Wonder with Thunder from Down Under. Um, so, jumping straight into it, uh, Sony uh, put together a heck of a show this year. I, I was thoroughly pleased. Um, Eddie, you want to lead us off? Yes. Um, so before we get to the press conference, they did show some other games, but we didn't add them on. Um, I did catch though that Undertale, which is a huge game, is coming to PS4 and Vita. So Sony remembers Vita. That's surprising. Um, no date for it, just yet, or price, but uh, you can find that information online. But the actual show, they started out playing some Egyptian style music and had sand design falling in the back. And it was like, huh? And I let me think, just say, I was very disappointed. It was not Prince of Persia. I thought it was a Assassin's Creed uh, Origins. Uh, uh, now it's a state. Origins, <laughs> origins. <laughs> Did I say Oregon? No, That's. I I'd play that Assassin's Creed Oregon. <laughs> Shoot, it needs to be in it. Uh, Ezio has died of dysentery. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Yes. Uh, but oh, I thought it was the new Assassin's Creed game. Couldn't find out it's actually Uncharted The Lost Legacy. They showed a little bit more of that. They actually showed the villain. Ooh, he looked it. Huh. Yes. Mm. Uh, but that's for me. Uh, Larry, any thoughts? Um. This is another one that we we talked about earlier um, that you know where we're seeing these these side stories these standalone stories built off of existing engines off of existing assets that are coming in at you know that thirty forty dollar price tag. Um, Uncharted is just one of those that I've just not gotten to play because I haven't picked up a Sony system since the PS2. Okay. So I just I I can't speak to it that much. Um, it looks interesting. I'm going to pick it up. I have all the Uncharted games, and so and people know my my feelings about that and my commentary. But this one looks promising, so I'm gonna pick it up. Uh, moving on, Horizon Zero Dawn DLC, The Frozen Wild is coming later on sometime in 2017. It's more Horizon. Uh, looks really good. Uh, don't know what the story, full story about the game is. Um, I hope that it's around. I feel like it's going to probably be like $15, hopefully. So um, how long it's going to be and what they're going to offer new, we probably won't know until the PlayStation experience. They only just showed a small trailer of it. I will say I think Frozen Wilds looks pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, they moved on to a full Not game. even an eye roll for uh, that. Really? I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> Look, Breath of the Wild over Horizon Zero Dawn, I'm just saying. Yeah, but Frozen Wilds looks so cool, Eddie. So cool. I, I hear enough of anything with Frozen in the title. I hear enough of the stupid music. I sell enough of the toys. I, mm. We're going to move on to Days Gone. <laughs> they showed some a long gameplay of this. Um, I was just like, oh, someone just looked at the bike and now knows where to go to find his partner. That was weird. So, okay, we'll go with that. Uh, I don't care. It's more zombie game that's not left for dead. Yeah. So, uh, someone wrote this like, yes, uh, they took the idea of hiding in the trees from Horizon because he was so hiding in the bushes and stuff. So, uh, yeah, that was Days Gone. Still no date about that. Um, Monster Hunter World is coming early 2018. It's also coming out for Xbox One. We just found that out. And later on in PC. Um, I, I Good on Capcom. This is money making for Capcom. Even though that Switch is getting Monster Hunter XX. And uh, the 3D, 3DS is getting Monster Hunter Stories for uh 3ds here in america so nintendo's getting two products uh xbox and uh 
Sony is getting, I think this is the first Monster Hunter in the U.S. for those systems. I don't, I don't remember uh, earlier a different Monster Hunter coming for Sony's platform here in America. Yeah, not that I can think of. I am really curious to see how Monster Hunter translates into a story-driven single-player game uh, for something that is traditionally, you know, all about the uh, the multiplayer, that kind of fantasy star mm-hmm. online feel. And it looked very dull with, with it being so brown and earth tony. I'm like, Ugh, I don't. I don't know. know. I I watched it. I thought it looked pretty. I liked it. Oh, it looks pretty. I was just like. I wish they just had some different areas that show variety of color uh, in the game. Uh, I do like his sword, that bone sword. That was really yeah. nice. I, I was just like, yeah, I, I want that. Um, so Shadow of the Colossus is getting a completely remake. Uh, it's coming in 2018. Uh, Studio, Jap- uh, Studio Japan. I kind of just like, okay, everybody shut up. Studio Japan is releasing something. And I was just like, okay. That's that's the Colossus, and then it was just like Shadow of the Colossus. I'm like, is is this a remake? Yeah, I I I get. It, well, it yeah. looks to be. They didn't really say much on it, but it, it looks like a full blown remake, not just a, a you know a remaster like what we got on the PS3. Yes. Um, uh, you know this this looks stunning. Um, I will say. When I saw that that broken bridge, I was really, really hoping to go back to that world after the events of Shadow of the Colossus. Mm, okay. Well, uh, next. But I'll uh, still jump on board. I'll still play the fuck out of this. I I I don't own it. I need to buy it. Uh, but I think I'm gonna pick up this remaster to give it a play. Uh. Next up, it was Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. It's coming to September 19th. Right now, uh, while you guys are listening to this, you can download the story demo uh, right now. Uh, I haven't downloaded it just yet, but I will uh, by the time you guys hear this, and I will give uh, you guys a, a, a rundown of what I played and, or what they're showing. Um, people are kind of trolling it right now because they, they're showing... I guess there was something about the game that people are not liking, but and they're posting the Dragon Ball Fighter, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. They're like posting memes about that now. So uh, thoughts, Larry, on uh, Marv, uh, MVCI? This is not what I expect when I hear Marvel versus Capcom. Uh, I'm not complaining. It's just not what I expect. Exactly. You know this. This certainly has grabbed my attention. I I am certainly interested in uh, you know in a story centric game where the the Marvel characters and the Capcom characters don't just you know go toe to toe, but are actually working together and you know bantering and talking and it's fucking funny. Hmm. Well. Uh... I, I know I'm picking up the game because our uh, West Coast correspondent, Tony Zilakakis, I owe him a battle because uh, we really got to get down with some MV, uh, MVC2 and MVC3. Uh, definitely two we have to get there too. Uh, moving on for that, Call of Duty World War II is coming out November 3rd. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's... I, I don't even know what to say. Um, we're going to move on then. Uh, they got into the VR uh, portion of the show. So Skyrim VR, uh, we talked about already. Uh, Star Child VR. I'm going to say this about Star Child. I'm getting a good feel of Metroidvania in this game. I'm not. I'm getting it because it's a, it feels like it's a 2D game. And it looks like us a, a, a venture. So I don't know if I'm finding stuff. I don't know if it's level based or everything's connected. But I was just I don't know. I was just looking at it and I just got a just a Metroid feel to it. I didn't give get like a runner or a regular two D platform style game. I just didn't feel that. It was just something about it that just screamed like this is a Metroid style game. I don't know. I saw that giant robot at the end of their uh 
their demo of that, and I was just reminded of the final boss from Explosion Man. But no, I've it looks pretty. Mm-hmm. I'm interested. My problem is, why the hell did you make a 2D platformer a VR game? What the fuck was the point of that? That was, yeah, confusing. That bit was confusing. This just makes no sense to me. Well, uh, the impatient VR uh, seems like it's kind of a suspense horror kind of game. Um, I'm getting Shutter Island vibes from it. Uh, A little bit of that psychological thriller? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it looks interesting. Um, I wish Sony would stop. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me being cynical, but I wish Sony would just give it up with a VR thing, but they, they seem determined to double down on it. Mm-hmm. Um, which really what they should have doubled down on was the fucking Vita. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's a dead horse at this point. But you know, at the very least, it looks like they're bringing some, finally, some bigger experiences to PSVR, um, further trying to justify its existence, which it's it's needed that. If, if they're really going to make it a legitimate push, mm-hmm. then it needs more like this. Yes. Um, this is the one that you're going to probably really make fun of. Monster of the Deep is coming out 2017. It's the VR portion of Final Fantasy 15. Um, you had some uh, comments about this game on Twitter. Extreme Camping Simulator! <laughs> and I was just like, exactly. Uh, so, uh, you can watch the trailer if you want to, if you enjoy that. I'm like, whatever. Bravo you can Team. Cook out and you can fish and you can drink beer in virtual reality, guys. You can get virtual drunk on your virtual booze. Bravo Team VR. I really thought it was so calm, but it's not, and I'm disappointed. So, uh, thoughts? I'm I'm with you. It didn't have the so calm look to me, but God, Sony, bring back so calm. Um, no, all I could think looking at it is, yep, this is what a shooter looks like in virtual reality. Okay. Yeah. It just looked bland to me. And, uh, well, I think this was probably the best game out of the whole show me. Moss uh, is by Polyarc. Uh, they didn't have no date for it. Uh, I enjoyed the music. I kind of like the mouse. I like Moss. Uh I it got kind of a little bit cliche at the end with the snake coming out, uh, but I was digging this game. I was digging this platformer. You know this this I watched it. And I'm like, this is cute. I like it. I'm interested. We have an adventurous little mouse, and you know what I kept thinking? I kept thinking Redwall. Like, man, this could be cool if this is fucking Redwall. I've never heard of Weird Wall. It's it's an old book series. Um, check it out. Uh, like go go find one, read the first one, and get back to me. You be like, yeah, Moss could Moss totally should have been Red Wall. Okay. Uh, mo- mo- uh, moving on, they show God of War. Uh, that's coming early twenty eighteen. Um, I kind of like the shot where it showed the little vase with Kratos with his blades and he's looking like someone was really being shady to <laughs> Kratos. Uh, I guess the axe, the axe that he uses is main weapon. Um, uh, and I'm sorry to say this, but, uh, if the boy dies to give Kratos his full abilities back, I'm in. I, I, I mean, it's God of War. It looks good, but I really wasn't impressed. I'm just like, oh, uh, uh, yeah. Thoughts? Um, I, I got several on this, actually. I think finally we we saw more of this that looked like God of, like the, the traditional kind of God of War set piece combat um, in conjunction with some of that more uh, over the shoulder exploratory um, third person action as well. Um, I'll be curious to see how those two blend. 
Um, I am really genuinely interested. Like, I loved, I was so thoroughly invested in Kratos' story. I am really interested to see how Kratos uh, as a character evolves as a father, as somebody struggling to come to grips, come to terms with his humanity, and um, and not necessarily atone for, but just kind of come to terms with what he did through the events of the original trilogy, um, and see how it ties together and how it it shapes his relationship with his son. Uh, side note, what the hell is this child's name? All he's been called so far is boy. Um, uh, yeah, I I don't know. Um, it's the thing with me. It's just like you're getting given a second chance to raise somebody because you lost your daughter, not but you gained a son, and it just feels like you are still angry and upset, and it's just like. Is that your motivation for you to do what you do? And like, I I don't know. It's it's confusing to me for right now. Uh, no, but it's, yeah, it's understandable that Kratos is a default angry character. I mean, this is a guy who's been through and a guy who's lost a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, he he's lost a wife and child. He's lost, you know, his son's mother. This is a guy who's experienced, you know, a, a life of Greek tragedy. You know, that that kind of shit takes a toll on somebody and their personality. And I don't know if it looks oppressive. I'll pick it up because I own the other other games. Uh, yeah, that's me. Uh, Detroit Become Human. They showed a little bit more of that. Uh, still, they showed a lot more of that. Um, I have to rewatch it because my stream froze. And it got fuzzy, and I couldn't see how the whole thing went. So I'm gonna go back and watch it. But this is definitely a game that I'm buying. This is a must buy for me. I, ever since they showed the first Detroit Become Human, I was just like, "Yep, I want this. This is giving me Snatcher vibes. This is giving me uh, uh, the game that we talked about last time uh, from that movie." Uh, keep the Blade Runner, yeah. It's giving me that. It's giving me that ride, that vibe. Uh, yeah, I, I I want this game. Yeah, no. I mean, Detroit Becomes Human uh, still looks fantastic. I'm trying to reconcile in my head how we got from the trailer last year to the trailer this year. I'm trying to figure out how they piece together, or do they? Uh, you know, is what we saw last year scrapped it out the window? Um, but no, I am, I am a hundred percent into this. Um, the, the whole, you know, artificial intelligence uprising thing has piqued my interest. This, this looks like solid, uh, good hardcore sci-fi writing. And I am, I am absolutely on board with this. I am curious to see if you can totally make it through this game playing a pacifist and talking your way through this uh, uh, this revolution, yeah. So, um, Destiny Two is coming out sept- September sixteenth. Uh, just found out the beta is going to be available July eighteenth, so you guys will be able to play that. Um, I'm going to that try is to the sh- pre order beta. You've got the open beta for Xbox One and PS4 coming just a few days behind that as well. Okay. Um, I'm going to actually get it on both systems because I do want to try it out with different people and see how they run just, you know, to compare and stuff. Uh, last but not least, because uh, I don't know if you have any idea, uh, any thoughts on Destiny 2. Um, not really, but again, that just falls into the fact that Destiny is not my thing. Okay. Um, last but not least, uh, Spider-Man 2018, that's what they use to close out the show. And I might get yelled at about this, but this is like Batman, Arkham Games, and Metroid Other M put together in this combat. I don't know. I, I kind of got some feels of uh, Uncharted in there, which mm-hmm. is not yes. all that surprising. Um, you know, it. 
I like the fact that this looks like it is more of a a longer story driven narrative rather than the open world lame sauce that has been the last handful of Spider Man games. Yes. Um you know, where it felt very wash rinse repeat. Oh, there's a guy doing a carjacking on the other side of the city. Go there and stop him. You know, this this looks like it has some great set pieces. Um, it looks like they're really digging into some characters and, uh, you know, building up their story, their personalities. Uh, we, we saw Mr. Negative in the, uh, trailer here, um, as the leader of a, uh, clan, uh, or a gang moving in on, uh, Kingpin's territory. And, uh, you know, you, you saw Spider-Man getting kind of mouthy with, uh, Kingpin, uh, while he's in prison there. Um, I'm, I'm curious. I, Kingpin to me has always been a fascinating villain anyways. So this, this is something I'm totally in for. Yeah. I'm down for that. So, uh, that was the Sony press conference. Uh, my thoughts about the Spider-Man game that it looks good. Uh, very impressed. And Sunday, and Sunday, I always make very good games. They're very talented as a company, as a developer. Uh, but yeah, that's what the Sony show was. Um, I, for me personally, I feel like Microsoft and Sony like tied together. Uh, so yeah, once again, it's another four out of five Yoshi coins for me. Um, and I gotta say, and I gotta say, like Sony, Microsoft, Bethesda, and Ubisoft, very impressive showings. Like really on point with showing games and stuff. Yeah, a little bit talkative for Microsoft and Ubisoft, but you know everybody's been on point. All four of those conferences were better than whatever EA did. I'm sorry, Anthem was good, but that was better in Microsoft Show Conference. Yeah, EA definitely presented the uh, the week showing here um, out of everybody. Yeah. So. Uh, and tomorrow we'll be checking out Nintendo. So you guys will be getting us some updates for that one. They are going to be doing like a showcase and then they're going to be doing some games and announcements throughout the week. Uh, so uh, we'll let you guys know how that's going to go all about. You can hear more at uh, shoutengine.com. Follow us on Twitter at world one underscore one podcast. And you can email the show at my, not my, at world one one podcast at gmail.com. Sorry, I was thinking about a different podcast. I won't say. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it, guys. We're going to be back uh, tomorrow with uh, all the Nintendo coverage for their uh what we're being told is a 25 minute uh spotlight showcase um that's what we're going to be covering on the uh, next warp world episode and then it uh on monday when we do our regular show uh we'll be back with uh full e3 roundup coverage including anything that came out of the uh subsequent uh treehouse live stream as well yes with that, everybody, have a great night. Have a great day. Whenever you're hearing this podcast. And we'll see you guys next time on World War One Podcast for Nintendo's press conference or showcase. And with that, everybody, we are out. Bye. Peace.